Today I've been out and about flying the DJI FPV drone and I thought I'd put this video together on the FPV drone smart batteries and in this video I'm going to talk to you guys a bit about how they work, some of their features and give you guys some hints and tips on how to get the best possible performance from them. Now you may be someone from traditional FPV and is used to dealing with normal LiPos or you might have a Mavic or something like that but there are some quirks to these batteries you do need to be aware of and there's some little behavioural quirks that it is worth knowing to get the best possible performance performance out of them and I'm going to walk you guys through them in this video. Now just before we do that if you do find it useful please do consider hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. If you'd like to support the channel there are links to this overpriced battery as well as the DJI FPV drone in the description of this video as well. They are affiliate links but if you would like to support us they are there to be used too. Anyway let's get on with it and let's have a talk about this smart battery from DJI. Now, the DJI FPV drone uses a smart battery like we've seen on many of the other drones from DJI over the years. They started using smart batteries in about 2015 on the Inspire 1 and Phantom 3 series, and that's when we first saw the proper smart batteries come along. Now, this battery on the DJI FPV drone is a 6S 2000 milliamp hour smart battery. It has a built-in charge circuit, it has a built-in discharge circuit, balance circuit, and battery monitor monitoring circuit as well. The battery has a connector which is similar to an XT60 but it is a little bit wider overall with smaller pins. In the middle of this connector there are also three additional pins that are data lines and these are used for transmitting that smart battery information from the battery itself to the aircraft. Now because this is a smart battery it also behaves slightly differently to get it to actually work and that is you need to turn it on first. Now like many of the other DJI products this is done by a single press and release and then a press and hold again to actually power the drone on. Now, the way this battery works is a bit different to a traditional LiPo. Normally on a LiPo, you actually have to charge it with a dedicated charger that carefully monitors the voltage and current, whereas the DJI battery is simply charged by a standard switch mode power supply. The charge circuit is actually built into the battery and all of the voltage, current and cell balancing is handled internal into the battery itself. Because of this it allows DJI to have some quite interesting features that you don't get on traditional LiPos. For instance the battery is actually capable of self-discharging itself if it's been left fully charged. Just like batteries from other DJI models if you leave it fully charged for about three days it will actually begin to self-discharge itself roughly down to about 50 to 65 percent capacity. That means rather than have to actually manage the battery yourself, it gives you the option of just leaving it and it will sort itself out. Alongside that, as I've already mentioned, it also does all of the balancing internally and when it charges the battery, it handles that automatically without you having to intervene at all. Now, as a result of having all of these smart features, it allows DJI to do some quite nice features on their drones, including some of the options such as low battery return to home, have accurate flight time measurement as well as have the option of actually triggering return to home when you've only got enough battery left to actually get to the point of takeoff and that is something we've seen included in many of the DJI drones over the years including the FPV drone we have now. Now one of the interesting things about these batteries as I've already mentioned is you cannot charge them off a traditional LiPo charger or at least you shouldn't charge them off a LiPo charger. As I mentioned the charger that DJI provide is a basic mains power supply and the battery handles all of that charging internal. Now the nice thing about this though is that it is very easy to actually build battery charges for these batteries and I've actually built one or two in the past. I built one for the original Inspire 1, Inspire 2 and I'm going to be building a new charger for the FPV drone over the next couple of weeks and if you're interested in seeing that don't forget to subscribe and that way you'll get the notification when that one actually comes out. Now whilst there are a lot of upsides to these batteries there are quite a few downsides as well. The biggest being the price. These LiPos are frankly ridiculously priced and they cost between three and five times more than a traditional LiPo battery. Whilst you do get all those extra features you are paying for it and you are paying for the privilege of being able to have them as part of your drone. Now something though to add though as part of these batteries is there are some upsides as well and some of the 
the upsides of those features is battery safety. These batteries from DJI are some of the safest LiPo batteries I have ever used. Reports of a DJI smart battery going on fire are extremely rare and I can only think of one or two cases that I can remember in the last five to six years. They're also some of the easiest batteries there are to use as well. You simply put it on charge, fly it. If you don't fly it, it will self-discharge itself and you don't have to worry about it. Charging is a breeze because you simply plug it in and there is very little to actually worry about with these batteries other than simply putting them on charge and flying them. However, there are some quirks to some of this behavior we're going to talk about a little bit in a minute as well. And there are some things you need to be aware of, especially around the self-discharging. Now, because it is a DJI smart battery, it also has the built-in battery level meter, which you simply press the button and it will show you what the remaining capacity is. Now, something you might not be aware of is by pressing that, it also allows you to delay the self-discharge feature as well. So for instance, if you haven't used the battery for a few days, if you were to press that button every day it would actually prevent the battery entering self-discharge and it would allow you to keep them fully charged rather than the battery self-discharge between three and five days later. Whilst talking about that self-discharge feature, whilst it is very handy, there are some behavior quirks that you do need to be aware of. For starters, when it does enter self-discharge, the battery will give off a little bit of heat and it will actually get warm. So you do need to be aware of that. And when you are storing these batteries and if you haven't used them and charged them, you will need to make sure they do get a bit of airflow to make sure that they can cool themselves down as they enter self-discharge. One other part of this is you should never fly one of these batteries once they have entered self-discharge. At that point, once the self-discharge is triggered, the battery's internal battery measurement may not be accurate. And there have been a number of cases in the past where people have lost their drones as a result of flying one of these batteries that has entered the self-discharge. So do take that into account. If you have charged it and not used it for three or four days, put it back on charge before flying it and don't risk taking it out, hoping that it will be okay. Now, just to give you guys a few warnings and tips around these batteries, the first big one is the one I just mentioned. Never fly one of these batteries that is partly charged or it has entered self-discharged. With all of the DJI Smart batteries, they are fairly low C and they do not react well to flying them, leaving them and trying to fly them again or flying them after it's self-discharged. Only ever fly these batteries when they have been fully charged and within ideally two days of them being fully charged. If it's been longer, pop it back on charge before actually flying it. That way that you know the battery will be fully charged. Another quirk of these batteries is that they don't like cold temperatures and they won't generally actually fly below 15 degrees C. So you do need to make sure that you keep these batteries warm when you're not using them between say home and the flight location. And if you are somewhere that does get to very low temps, you will need to find a way of keeping these batteries warm to be able to use them. If you are going to take off below 20 degrees C, I would strongly suggest hovering for a little bit of time before actually taking off to allow the batteries to actually warm themselves up first before pushing them too hard. Talking about pushing these batteries hard as well, one piece of advice I have when you first get your DJI Smart Battery is don't push them too hard for the first five or so flights. As I've mentioned, these batteries have a built-in fuel gauge which measures the current and voltage of the battery as you use it, and it actually builds up a log of the condition of the cells internally the more you use the battery. When you first get them though, that log is blank and the battery needs to build up a picture of the voltage and current curve that the battery actually has. So when you first get them, my advice to you would be to only fly these batteries down to about 40% for the first few flights. And then after you've got past the first four or five, then stretch the legs on them a little bit more. Moving into charging and also talking a little bit about how long you should expect the DJI smart batteries for the FPV drone to actually last. Now, with regards to charging, as I mentioned earlier, the smart batteries are some of the easiest batteries there are from a drone point of view to use. You simply plug them into the adapter or the hub, let the battery handle the charge, 
take it off, go flying. However, that isn't to say there aren't some things you can do to help improve the longevity and the life of your packs. And the biggest one of them for me is adequate rest time between cycles. Specifically, if you're charging your batteries in the field, give them at least half an hour rest time after a flight before putting them back on charge. Now, we all have a limited number of these due to the crazy price and being able to charge them in the field is a very good way of getting additional flight time. But I do strongly advise you give the packs at least half an hour for the voltages to recover on the cells, the cells temperatures to come down and the back to settle overall. In my experience that is the best way of getting the most life from these DJI batteries and is something I have done on all of my DJI batteries and I've never had any problems. Now with regards to charging and the hub people often ask is it okay to leave your batteries on this hub all of the time and my answer to that is no I do not advise you leave your batteries on the hub or on charge continuously. We will talk at the end of the video about storing the batteries but what you should do is put your batteries onto this to charge once they're charged take them off this and put them somewhere safe before you use them or take them directly with you. Now, with regards to how long you should expect these smart batteries to last. Now, there is no guarantees here. However, as you can see, I've got quite a selection of DJI smart batteries in front of me and I've personally never had one fail yet. In the past, we have had DJI smart batteries fail in as little as 100 cycles on drones such as the Inspire 1. On more recent models such as the Mavic 2 Pro, we've had these batteries starting to swell as well. However, that isn't something I have personally had. As for how many cycles you'll actually get, it is an unknown. A hundred is probably going to be a rough estimate, but they could go two or 300, depending on how well you look after them. There are so many variables here at play, whether it be temperature, charge cycles, back-to-back -back charging, how hard they're pushed, and the simple chemical makeup of each specific individual pack. A battery is a battery, and it can randomly fail at any time, but you should expect around 100 cycles minimum, but we're going to have to see how long these actually last, because it is early days yet and there is no one as far as I'm aware who has got that many cycles on it outside of the initial beta testers but from a public point of view we're going to have to see how it pans out but they are expensive but they are a consumable at the end of the day and you if you are flying the DJI drone a lot you will find yourself going through a lot of batteries as people have found in the past. Climate will also play a large part into it where you live specifically around temperature as well. Keeping the battery temps down, especially when charging, does help a lot too. Now, one final thing I want to mention is how to store these batteries and how to store them long term. Now, the DJI batteries store ideally at about 50% charge, or for me, about two lights and one starting to flash. That is somewhere between 50 and 65% or roughly 3.85 volts per cell. That is the ideal voltage to store these batteries on. If you're going to store these batteries long term for say winter, charge them to about 70% and then leave them at that and check them every few weeks to make sure that they haven't dropped too much. Many of the new DJI batteries will enter a hibernation if you haven't used them for some time. Personally though, when I'm doing my batteries, I tend to check them every couple of weeks and then run them through a cycle every month or three just to make sure that the cells are getting exercised okay and you're keeping that fuel gauge up to date and the cells are actually able to balance them themselves too. Now if you ever get a situation on your DJI smart battery where you find the cells are starting to go out of balance whilst on the FPV drone that isn't actually able to check because you can't see the voltages but on things like the Mavic you can because you can see the individual cells the way to solve that is to fully discharge and fully recharge the battery three or four times very carefully and that should then allow the battery to recalibrate the cells and balance them correctly. However, if you find after a few charge cycles it doesn't balance, then the chances are the battery is duff. On older DJI batteries, you were actually able to take them apart and actually balance them manually. However, on these ones, they're pretty much fully sealed and there isn't a lot you can do about it. 
And that is pretty much it for this video. Now, really, there aren't many upsides to the DJI Smart Batteries, but there are many downsides as well. The biggest being the cost, and they are extremely expensive. It is a shame you can't actually fly the DJI FPV drone with a traditional LiPo, and whilst it will let you power it up, it won't actually let you take off unless one of their smart batteries is attached. There are some people, though, having a play, and they've actually been bolting extra batteries onto their drone as well, and we're going to see more and more people do mods like that over the next couple of months as people get used to using the drone but overall you do actually need to use the main DJI battery to be able to use it with the drone. Anyway that's it for this video I hope the information in it you have found useful if you have as I've already said please do consider hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell as well if you'd like to purchase some of these overpriced smart batteries there are a link to them in the description of this video as well as well as the DJI drone it is an affiliate link but by you guys using that you are supporting the channel and I'm able to keep making videos like this in the future anyway that's it for this one if you're interested in my battery build I'm going to be building a charger for these batteries as I mentioned, I'll be doing that in the next couple of weeks and I will be sharing that video on the channel as well.